So today we're going to be talking about warfarin or coumadin versus the NOAX, new oral anticoagulants. Um, why would we be talking about those anyway? Well, to help prevent disability in this country. The number one cause of disability is strokes. And a major and rising cause of strokes is atrial fib. This um, is supposed to show or demonstrate the most common assumption around atrial fib and stroke. You get decreased uh, emptying because of the chaos in the, uh, in the atria, and therefore you can form small clots. Those clots can then be released and pumped through the blood up to the brain, causing a stroke. Now, there's a lot of evidence which would indicate that it's really the comorbidities, the other problems that are associated with um, atrial fib. But no matter which way you slice it, atrial fib is considered to be a major cause of stroke and therefore a major cause of disability uh, in this country. Now, before we go into... Um, the NOACs and the advantages. Let's just talk for a second about an introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, um, PrevMed, Heart Attack, Stroke, Cancer Prevention, uh, and Disability Prevention uh, Center. <clears throat> so just a few minutes about warfarin or Coumadin. Well, it's got a reputation. People, most people know of it as a rat poison, and that's what it is. It uh, requires weekly blood studies, or sometimes bi-weekly. Uh, you're looking at the clotting time. It takes about 35 days to reach the goal clotting time, and there are dietary restrictions. Um, <clears throat> it's not so much that you can't have any uh, vitamin K type of foods, but you have to keep a balance, and it's very difficult uh, to keep a consistent week by week, same amount of vitamin K uh, agonists, and, or vitamin K sources. So for example, K, here are some sources, kale, spinach, uh, collards, uh, mustard greens, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, uh, cabbage, avocado, you know, all of, the, all of the vegetables that are green, you tend to think, okay, there are a lot of them, and most of them have vitamin K in them. Uh, in addition, there's some other things like tuna, blueberries, blackberries that most people wouldn't, they're not green, and you wouldn't tend to think of them as a source of vitamin K, but they are. So those are some of the challenges with um, Coumadin or Warfarin. Uh, here's, uh, here's a list of the NOACs, New Oral Anticoagulants. And remember, these are not antiplatelets. There's two different ways of increasing uh, clotting time. One is by decreasing platelet function. That's what aspirin does. Another is by decreasing the clotting time. And that's what the an oral anticoagulants do. That's what warfarin does, Coumadin. So <clears throat> here's the, the new anticoagulants. Uh, these are available everywhere. The first one available was Dibigitran or Pradaxa. Uh, Rivaroxaban or Xarelto, Apixaban or Eliquis, and Adoxaban's just come out, uh, Cervezo. So <clears throat> there are several different options now. Um, and what are the advantages? The advantages of the NOACs, they're immediately effective. You don't have to wait a month for them to have their impact. Um, you don't have to have weekly or bi-weekly blood tests. You don't have to worry about um, food restrictions or consistencies. You don't have to juggle, figure out what, what has vitamin K in it and how do I balance this week's blueberries versus next week's broccoli or kale. And here's the big one, less bleeding. That includes strokes, less bleeding than warfarin and uh, does it confuse you when I say strokes, less strokes? Well, here, j just think about the mechanism for strokes for just a second. There are two types of strokes, two ways you can have a stroke. One is to have a clot. 
they used to call that a dry stroke. In other words, the clot stopped the blood uh, by having, a again, a clot stopping up the artery and therefore blood couldn't get to the tissue. The other one is a hemorrhagic stroke. So <clears throat> the treatment, NOAX, warfarin, uh, and for those, a third of people who have uh, atrial fib and are incorrectly using aspirin, those guys as well, all of the, the treatments to prevent uh, clot stroke actually create risk for the other type of stroke, which would be hemorrhagic stroke. Now, again, you get less of that with the NOAX versus warfarin. And I just mentioned aspirin. Unfortunately, about a third of people that, are, that have atrial fib are taking aspirin. And aspirin is not an effective uh, preventative four strokes. I'll do that. I'll cover that. It's a whole different topic. It's a different issue. It's a very important issue. It was, it's uh, reflective of a major, another major uh, failure in our, in our medical system, partly due to the docs, partly due to the patients, and, and uh, as with many things, a whole lot due to fear and emotion. Uh, <clears throat> A lot of people are more are comfortable with aspirin, but afraid of uh, the anticoagulants. And the reality is, uh, the anticoagulants. Uh, you, there's a very good case to make to make that the anticoagulants are safer um, <clears throat> for the correct condition. So let's get back to uh, the NOAX versus Coumadin or warfarin. Now, is there no advantage for warfarin or Coumadin? Well, there is one perceived advantage, and that is that it has an antidote, uh, vitamin K, that will stop uh, warfarin's um, impact on clotting. Now, is this a real advantage? Uh, the reality is um, it's probably not. Now, why is that? Well, in the first place, the NOACs are less likely to cause a bleed. In the second place, dibigitran, Pradoxa, already has an immediate reversal agent. Now, why, don't, why, why are so many people on Xarelto or Eliquis versus uh, uh, dibigitran or Pradoxa? It's a dosage and convenience issue, but uh, he, here's the other thing. Within a few months, we're likely to have, we'll probably have antidotes, immediate antidotes for all of the NOACs. So, <clears throat> Again, uh, advantages versus disadvantages on uh, NOAX versus Coumadin. A couple of comments about aspirin and its inappropriate use in uh, atrial fib. And just a reminder of uh, another video that I've done regarding diet and prevention of atrial fib. Major advantage with using the Mediterranean diet and especially extra virgin olive oil. Thank you.